the means by which fossils are formed is called carbonization. When a plant or animal is buried beneath layers of sediment, over time, heat and pressure can turn that sediment into rock. And what's left of the organic materials is just an impression, oftentimes a very detailed impression. Now what takes nature millions of years to do, you can demonstrate in just a few hours in a glass kiln. This is a glass fossil. It's a piece of red glass and a piece of clear glass with a leaf sandwiched in between. But the leaf has burned away and all that's left is a carbon remnant, ash, if you will. To do this project, the first thing we're going to need is to collect organic materials. Now, I've tried a wide variety of leaves and plant life, and I've had the best success with plants within the evergreen family. I find that delicate flowers and ferns and leaves tend to burn away and not leave too much of an impression. It's hard to recognize what they are. So you need to find something with a lot of substance to it, like these juniper leaves here, or perhaps sedum, which has a real nice tight bud to it there. The next thing you're going to need is some glass. And let me just tell you right here that not all glass is created equal. Every type of glass has a different rate of fusing and melting. That's known as the coefficient of expansion. If you don't use glass that's compatible with each other, you'll get pretty unexpected results. So the glass that I'm going to use today is coefficient expansion rating, or COE, of 90. You'll need a piece of clear glass and a piece of colored glass. These are 6 inch by 6 inch squares but we only need to have about two inches squared. As a matter of fact, I would recommend no larger than that. Otherwise, the edges will fuse at different times. To cut a piece of glass, we'll just take a ruler, line it up about two inches, doesn't need to be perfect. Take a glass cutter. This is a pistol grip, oil-based glass cutter. You can see the oil inside there. That keeps the cutting edge here rolling smoothly. The cutting edge is a diamond tip. So when you run it along the glass and the ruler here, it creates a score line. And you can hear that nice scratch sound as it scores the glass. Next, we're going to take some glass pliers. The glass pliers have a mark, a line right here in the center, that we're now going to line up with the score line on our glass. As we apply pressure with the pliers, it's going to push down on either side of that score line and complete the break just nice and clean like that. Okay, well I have some pieces here that I've already cut. We'll start with the color background. I have a piece of nice cobalt blue there. The darker the color you use, the more dramatic the effects. We will layer a piece of the organic material over the top like this, and then put a piece of clear glass on top. The edges do not need to be aligned perfectly. This is going to be a fossil, so a little bit of irregularity there actually looks really neat. Anything that hangs off the edges will burn away and disappear, so you don't need to worry about that. If you have thick materials, you can just apply pressure to get them to stick down a little further. You can overlap materials underneath the glass there. A couple other things you can do before you fire it. We have some Amico high temperature wire. This high temperature wire can be layered in between the pieces of glass so that it fuses within the glass. Then you have a loop, perhaps, that you can make jewelry with more easily. We also have some Amico stringers. These are thinly extruded pieces of glass that can be attached just to add perhaps a line of dramatic contrast. To attach these, use a little bit of Elmer's glue, and that'll get it to stick. You don't want to use too much because the moisture in this could cause some bubbling. Okay, now the next thing we're going to need is a kiln. And I have here with me today an Amica warm glass kiln. This little kiln is perfect for small glass projects like jewelry making, precious metal clay, or enameling. It operates on a standard household current of 115 volts. You can see it has a front door here. This is for making glass beads, annealing glass on a mandrel. And if I open up the front chamber, you'll see it's 
nine inches by nine inches. The shelves and the posts are sold separately. And then come back here and we have the Glass Fire Select computer. This is pre-programmed for fusing and slumping. So you can just push a button and get great results the first time you ever use it. And it doesn't require ventilation at all. This can also be pre-programmed. Now, we're going to load this up in the kiln right here on top. And close the door. Now, this kiln is pre-programmed, but you can also write your own programs, which is what I've done for this particular project. I'm going to put this up on the screen now so that you can see it as well and run you through it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to ramp it quickly to 800 degrees Fahrenheit and hold that for about 30 minutes. That's going to give the organic material inside there time to burn off. And it's also going to allow time for any air bubbles that are in there to escape before the edges of the glass fuse down around it. After that hold, we'll take it up to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the fusing temperature for COE90 glass. We'll hold it there for about 15 minutes. Now this glass, when it's at that temperature, will almost be in a puddle. It'll be in an, almost a liquid state. After that, we'll start to cool it. We'll take it down to about 900 degrees Fahrenheit and hold it there for 20 minutes. If we step it down a little bit as we cool, then there's less stress on the glass and less chance of breakage. After that, just give it a normal cool. The process takes about nine hours total, so let's get that started now. Okay, the firing schedule is complete and the kiln is totally cool. So let's open it up and see what we have. All right. There is our finished glass fossil. Now, be careful when you pick it up. There could be some rough edges. Most of them should be gently rounded, fused together very cleanly. But if you do find that there's some sharp edges, you can work those off with an Amico abrasive stone. I would recommend the first time that you try this project that you do a test firing. Do one piece. Don't load the whole thing up with glass at once. There are variables that could cause some different results, so it would be best to just do one piece the first time you try it. Well, that's our glass fossils. Tell your science teacher about it. She'll probably want to join you in this project. There's a complete materials listing available in PDF format on our website. Also step-by-step -step instructions so you can have this in writing as well. And photographs to look at. You'll also find the uh, National Standards for Visual Arts Education located there as well. So thanks for joining us. I think you'll really enjoy this project.